The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Know Before You Go, for the students, by the students. My name is Cindy Myers, Exhibits and Meetings Manager at ESA, and I'll be one of your hosts for today's webinar. During today's session, we'd like to make sure that you're getting the most out of participating, and all attendees are muted on the entry of the call. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll notice a dialog box with several options. Today, we're going to use the questions box. So if you have any questions or you have any technical issues, please type a question into that questions box, and we will be answering questions at the end of the webinar today. So at this time, I'd like to turn over the webinar to Jocelyn Holt, Chair of the Student Affairs Committee. Hello and welcome everyone. I am very excited to share with you today uh, all of the information we have for the upcoming ESA meeting. And before we get into that, I'd just like to introduce our presenters for today. Uh, you have myself, Jocelyn Holt. We have uh, Lena Bernaola. We have Addie Dubé and Sandra Sachette, as well as Rebecca Zimler. So we have a few updates from the Student Affairs Committee as well as ESA before we go over the activities that you can participate in during our annual meeting. The Student Affairs Committee is composed of representatives from each ESA branch and section, and we are responsible for helping motivate interest in student activities as well as to help organize events. And we've included a list of these different activities and events that we will discuss in further detail as we continue on with the presentation. For the 2019 Student Affairs Committee, uh, you can see all of your representatives listed here. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're thinking of who represents you at the annual meeting. As part of the Entomology Today blog series, ESA SAC has contributed a number of articles, and we hope that you will go look for them as they cover a range of topics from transitioning into uh, becoming an early career entomologist to how to find a good mentor to what to do and how to network uh, at ESA. We also are contributing to the new student life section in the redesigned American Entomologist. And we hope that you will check out these articles which cover topics of interest to ESA student members as well as the greater community. Um, we have one from fall 2019 um, on the importance of finding your work-life balance, as well as an upcoming one on promoting a culture of inclusion and diversity. And we hope that you look forward to more articles from us in 2020. We also would like to uh, let you know that we are holding a symposium on advocacy and action, tackling invasive species through collaboration, policy, and public engagement. We have some amazing speakers lined up and we hope that you will come attend on Sunday, the 17th of November, starting at 1.30 p.m. Central Standard Time in America's Center Room 241. And there are uh, topics and uh, organisms from a broad range of fields, so we hope that you'll come check that out. We also are hosting the annual debates, and this year's topic will be synergisms in science, climate change, and integrated pest management through the lens of communication. We have some exciting and relevant topics for this year uh, that are associated with science advocacy and climate change, as well as integrated pest management, and we hope that you will attend on Tuesday, the 19th of November, starting at 1 p.m. in America Center Room 241. For updates uh, on the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, 
Uh, we would like to advertise that they are looking for additional individuals to join, and anyone can join uh, the DNI committee. They're looking to expand, and you can attend on Tuesday, the 19th of November, from starting at 1 p.m. in the Benton Room at the Marriott Grand. And if you cannot attend, make sure to look for um, this committee and updates from the ESA mobile app. For the ESA task force, uh, there was uh, originally member concern over ESA's esteem games being classified or uh, associated with Linnaeus's uh, name. We collected lots of feedback and there will be updates, including questions of histories from individuals of underrepresented backgrounds and a logo that will better reflect the current ESA community. And on behalf of members of the SBC, um, we would like to say we support the collegiality of the games. And although we acknowledge the contributions of Carl Linnaeus to the scientific field, we do not subscribe to the inaccurate and unscientific beliefs on the categorization of human varieties associated with Carl Linnaeus. For diversity inclusion updates, uh, we are doing safety pins and beads at the ESA booth so that you can express proudly your diversity to the greater community uh, by selecting any color safety pin and a bead that represents your diversity. We also have uh, pronouns that will be displayed on badges to allow individuals to identify the gender that um, they associate with and make sure that it is accepted by the greater community. And with that, I would like to hand it off to Sandra to talk about uh, our ESA annual events. Great, thank you so much, Jocelyn, for that. And so today I'm going to be talking about events other than the official scientific programming that we can all enjoy at the ESA conference. And so first I'm going to talk about workshops. These are um, opportunities that are interactive. You can interact with the instructors of the workshop. You can interact with the other participants of the workshop. They typically last for um, three to eight hours, so they do overlap with um, the scientific programming of ESA, as well as potentially other, um, other activities such as the student debates or the Linnaean games. They usually cost between five and $15, so they are very affordable. Registration can fill up before the meeting, so if there's a workshop that you're interested in, we recommend that you register for it as soon as you know that you'll be able to attend. And um, the, these workshops are going to be happening every single day, and in the program online, you can learn about the um, availability of these workshops, whether or not they're full. And these workshops typically will focus on professional skills that can directly advance your career in entomology, whether that's a career in, e in research, in industry, in formal education, such as a university setting, informal education, such as a museum setting or a nature center, or advocacy. And so these workshops cover a variety of topics. There's too many to list here, but um, there are a number of workshops that touch on outreach and scientific communication. Um, there's also a workshop on advocacy via social media, recognizing and addressing implicit bias. This is a topic that uh, we are increasingly recognizing its importance. There's also gonna be a workshop on ARM software certification training for industry, and also on using biological control agents. And then in addition to the workshops, which can last the entire day, we also have lunch and learn sessions. So these are during lunch, as you might expect. So they always last for exactly one hour. And that hour is during the break between activities such as the Linnaean Games and between the conference sessions. And every day of the annual meeting, there's going to be at least one lunch and learn available. And the date and location for all of these will be listed in the program. There's no cost to these, they're absolutely free. You just show up with your own lunch. And there's also no need to register in advance. So you don't need to worry about these filling up before, um, before you might have the opportunity to register. The focus is less about uh, the, the skills that you might use every day in your career. And they tend to be more philosophical rather than hands-on in contrast to the workshops. 
And so these topics, uh, this year it focuses a lot on advancing your career. So you can learn, we'll have separate sessions for building your brand, getting a job, getting funding from the National Science Foundation, promoting your publications, helping other people to, rel to realize the relevance, to appreciate the relevance of your research to their research. We also will have a lunch and learn on cultural diversity in the workplace. And for the systematics and evolution section, there will be a lunch and learn on serving in leadership positions. And then kind of the, the centerpiece for many people of the ESA annual meeting is the exhibit hall. And we're gonna go over the many, many, many things that you can do in the exhibit hall. So first of all, there are many academic opportunities. So there are poster sessions and there are also poster social hours. And so posters tend to be up for almost 24 hours. So you can check out the posters in the exhibit hall um, pretty much any time during the day when those individual posters are presented. But there are also the poster social hours, which is going to be when the people who made those posters are going to be there. So that's when you're required to stand near your poster if you're presenting a poster yourself. And it's also when you have the opportunity to interact with the authors of the posters that you find most interesting. Also in the exhibit hall, there are other scientific societies, such as the Lepidopterist Society, for example, that will have booths. And there are many opportunities that you can take advantage of at those booths. You can learn about the publications that each of these scientific societies put out. These publications are often great outlets for your first scientific publications, you know, in addition to ESA's journals. Sometimes you can even get free student memberships to these societies. And these societies also often will offer student funding opportunities. And that can include travel grants to attend conferences. It can include research grants to pay for things like field work and travel. And in addition, in the exhibit hall, there are university recruitment booths. And these booths are a great place to meet current students in graduate programs that you're interested in applying to. And this is more casual than a planned meeting. It's more casual than a meeting with a professor. So it's a really kind of low stress introduction to graduate programs that you might wish to attend. And in addition to these academic opportunities, there's also lots of fun things to do in the exhibit hall. So there is a welcome reception on Sunday night. And so that's going to be after the keynote speaker. So in this case, it's gonna be set from 7.30 to nine. There will be a book signing with the keynote speaker if you wish to meet her and get a copy of her book. And that's also just a great place to meet people because you know, almost the entire conference converges on the exhibit hall at that moment. And it's at the very beginning of the conference. In the evening, there's often food and drinks available. There um, can be adult beverages for purchase and there can be snacks available. And in addition, in the exhibit hall, you can go shopping. So you can buy insect collecting supplies, um, a wide range of materials that can be helpful to you. You can also buy books and journals that are scientifically or entomologically themed. And then you can also learn more about uh, technical equipment, such as the larger machinery that your department might purchase. And then there also will be a raffle and prizes. And this is going to be for the Chrysalis Fund, which is an, an initiative of the Entomological Society of America. And it supports entomological education for students in primary and secondary school. It's managed by ESA's Education and Outreach Committee. This is a really great committee that I would highly encourage you to learn more about before the meeting and during the meeting. So you can purchase your raffle tickets in the exposition hall, in the exhibit hall at ESA's booth. And there are a variety of prizes. You can win an iPad mini, but you can even win a VIP travel package to the annual meeting of ESA next year in 2020, which is going to be in Orlando, Florida. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of prizes in addition to that. And then another initiative is gonna be the antlion pit. The antlion pit is a relatively new initiative of ESA. This is for fans of Shark Tank who like insects more than they like sharks. So presumably this is many ESA members. And so the focus of antlion pit is venture ideas for products and services. You can kind of think of this as entomological startups. And the overarching theme of the antlion pit is entrepreneurial spirit. And this includes leadership, innovation, teamwork, and mentorship. 
So the way that the antlion pit works is that there's a competition in two stages, and as an attendee of the ESA meeting, you are welcome to come and participate in both of those stages. In stage one, which is going to be on Monday, starting in the morning in the exhibit hall, you can interact with the competitors. So for these startups, a lot of the time they will have created different prototypes, and you can try those out. And then stage two is going to be Monday in the afternoon. So it's the same day, just after lunch. And that's going to be in America's ballroom. And what happens there is that it's more like the TV show Shark Tank, where there's a five-minute presentation from each team, followed by 10 minutes of questions. And some of those questions are going to come from the Antlion Pit judges. But as a member of the audience in attendance, you can ask questions too. So there's going to be two opportunities for you to interact with the competitors in the Antlion Pit. Sorry, I'm just having a little trouble advancing the slides here. Okay. And then there's also going to be activities outside of the convention center that are hosted by ESA and arranged by ESA. So it's very easy to register for those. So sorry about this. All right. Um, Okay, um, it seems that the slides were skipped over for the tours of St. Louis, but there's more information about that on the ESA website. And now I'm going to turn it over to Lena, who's going to talk about the Linnaean Games. Thank you, uh, Sandra from for the introduction. Hello everyone, uh, I am going to tell you about some student other activities that uh, you cannot miss in the upcoming meeting. But before I begin, I uh, want to share the official hashtag for the um, annual meeting, which is NSOC19. So you can post on social media your favorite uh, memories while you are there. So feel free to use also the image that you see here or you can access to these, find it in the website of ESA as well. So, the Linnean Games is a long tradition competition between teams from various universities. It is a trivia ball that will test every facet of your insect knowledge as well as familiarity with ESA. So the winners will be recognized at the student award ceremony. So please try to attend and cheer uh, on your favorite school. We are uh, kicking off the games on Sunday, uh, November 17 at 1 p.m. And the final round will be on Tuesday, November 19 at 5 p.m. So <clears throat> the Woman and Allies uh, in Entomology Breakfast is another event that you cannot miss this year. The breakfast environment is designed to mix career stages and bridge disciplinary silos to encourage networking, mentoring, and collegiality among established entomologists and those who are students or beginning their careers. This event is sponsored every year by Corteva AgriScience, and this will be happening on Monday, November 18, from 6.30 to 7.50 a.m. I really encourage all of you to try to attend, wake up so early, and make it, because it is really uh, worth it to go to this breakfast. So um, another breakfast on the following morning is the awards breakfast. And this event, professionals and early career professionals will be honored for their hard work. It is a free event, which will also feature the Founders Memorial Lecture. Uh, this year, the recipient to this lecture is Dr. Walter Lyle who will give a talk honoring the memory of outstanding scientist and so-called the father of chemical ecology, Dr. Thomas Eisner, and his contributions, his contributions uh, to entomology. Um, now switching a little bit years, if you are a student volunteer this year, please don't forget to attend one of the training sessions, either Saturday or Sunday, to review your duties. So if you uh, didn't have a chance or an opportunity to volunteer this year, 
you can sign up for next year as well. Now, new this year, ESA has created a way to be clear with attendees about whether you grant permission or not for your presentation slides or poster to be photographed or shared on social media. So you can use uh, or download these images and insert them in the corner of your slides or poster. So to make clear if you want people to uh, share or not on social media, your work. Now, let me go over a few tips for your presentations. In general, uh, we know that we should avoid a uh, jargon or try to speak slowly, but not, I mean, trying to cover also the limit of time that you are uh, trying to uh, uh, talk at the same time. So be mindful also of the colors that you use in your presentation and use large and legible fonts, like uh, for example, showing in this slide. In addition, you don't wanna crowd your slide with too many figures or text as, as well I'm showing in this slide. So this is also one example what probably you shouldn't do uh, crowding your slides. But if you need more information about tips and what, uh, how to prepare your presentation, please uh, you can access to this going to the ESA website. Now, as I am sure all of you um, know the details about oral and poster uh, competition and how usually uh, you will make those presentations. So I won't spend much time on it. However, I do wanna remind you that for a uh, oral presentation or the 10 minute presentation, you have a limit of eight minutes for the presentation and two minutes for questions. Judges usually will rate each presentation based on the delivery and scientific content equally. But for poster presentations or competition, sorry, judges will weight the scientific content and a little more in the, uh, they will evaluate the scientific content a little more than the uh, display of the poster. Now, uh, this year we have the three minutes talk competition as well. They were called in the past the lightning bug talks because these are short and to the point talks. They span in a wide range of topics. So these presentations are highly focused uh, because speakers have only three minutes to convey the research. So if you are presenting a, a three minutes talk, here is an overview of the rubric, rubric uh, that you will be using, that judging, judges will be using in the scoring. So be sure to check it out before uh, you're preparing your talk or you know wh why you are preparing your talk as well. So if you're not presenting, this event is also a great opportunity for the audience, audience members to see different uh, talks in a short window. So it promised uh, to be a very exciting and fast-paced event. So don't miss it out. This year, it's a, also there is no restriction to the number of slides a presenter may use in the three minutes talk, as in the past years. Now, new this year, we have the infographic competition. By learning to create infographics, uh, entomologists can reach diverse audiences leverage a fun tool to teach new concepts to uh, our colleagues and gain communication skills that can serve uh, to pursue a more traditional tasks such as creating posters or drafting figures for future uh, publications. To help you just start it, check it out uh, the website for more tips, examples, or other resources on how to create the infographics. Judges will evaluate equally the scientific context, organization, and uh, the visuals. Here is, for example, a good uh, infographic presentation. Pretty much with one picture or with one main picture, you can communicate several aspects of your topics. But something that you cannot forget is also to include citations on this uh, presentation or in your infographic presentation. So um, another activity uh, happening for the students is the virtual posters. This will be located in the exhibit hall next to the regular poster sessions. If you cannot attend to the uh, meeting this year, that is not a problem. So you can still participate, network, and potentially win a prize. 
So the virtual poster will be presented on a touch screen for easy viewing and it will be evaluated just like a, uh, the regular posters. So uh, last but not least, the student award ceremony will be held on Tuesday, November 19 at 6.30 p.m. right after the Linean Games uh, competition. This uh, will include the recognition from ESA of students who have distinguished themselves through their contributions to entomology, but also for uh, it will be a, an opportunity to recognize uh, the, student, the student winners from the uh, comp uh, student competitions from each session during the meeting. So these uh, are called the uh, presidential uh, prize that will, giving, that will be given to first and second places. So now with this, uh, I will hand it over to Aditi. Thanks, Lena. So I'm going to be talking about some tips for how to get around, do, get around and do well both at the conference and also how to explore the city of St. Louis. Sorry, just taking a second to get through the slides. Uh, oh, there we go. So one thing to remember is that you want to dress well and make a good impression. So you're going to see a lot of people at the conference who are dressed pretty casually, but those are generally people who are further along in their career. As a student, you really want to look professional. And so for the most part, you should opt to dress in at least business casual clothes or even more formal clothes when you yourself are making a presentation. Generally, this means for men, you should be wearing at least nice trousers and a button down shirt and close toed shoes. And for women, nice trousers or skirt with a nice shirt or blouse. And you can also wear a more formal dress. However, you don't have to break the bank or carry a ton of stuff with you. Dressing well can be stressful. Nice clothes are often expensive. One way to do this is to mix and match. So if you have a nice pair of trousers, you can wear them with different shirts on different days. And adding layers also helps with this. Um, if you want to put on a blazer or a cardigan over something, you can make it look nicer. And lastly, accessories. Um, a really nice looking pair of shoes or a really nice belt or a piece of jewelry can also help your outfits look more put together. And finally, do remember to take your badge off when you leave the conference center, just as a security precaution. Another thing that can be a little bit stressful is managing your time at the meeting. It is a very large meeting and it's easy to get overwhelmed. One way to avoid this is to plan out your schedule for each day beforehand. The online scheduler and the phone app are a great way to do this because they allow you to look for stuff by presenter, by the type of event, or by specific topics and keywords, and you can also save what it is you want to do and make yourself a virtual calendar. So start with the things that you know for sure you want to do, like obviously your own presentation or poster, um, keynote addresses, symposia that you're really interested in, and then you can fill it out with other stuff like lunch and learns, other symposia, or time to do other things at the conference. And although it is primarily academic, that's the reason we're there, also schedule time for yourself to socialize, whether that's catching up with friends or networking with potential employers, and also give yourself some time to check out the local sites. And lastly, it is also okay to give yourself some time off. It is overwhelming and if you need some time to just go back to your room or check your email or just sit down quietly for a few minutes, you don't have to feel bad. It's completely okay to do that as well. And um, lastly, I do wanna mention that there are gonna be things that are scheduled at the same time and you might have to make some hard choices about what activities to participate in. And unfortunately, that is just one of the realities of a busy conference. Um, you, may, you may have noticed that the first round of the Linnaean Games actually overlaps with the, our student symposium, and I'm participating in both, so I'm gonna have to spend half my time at one and half my time at the other. So just be aware when you're scheduling things that there may be conflicts you have to choose in between. So now on to some more fun stuff. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the city of St. Louis and how to get around and things to do. 
Um, so the tours were mentioned briefly earlier, and these are very popular. So some of them have filled up already, and so I'm only going to discuss the ones that still have some seats available. The first one is the 5K Fun Run, or the Running Tour of St. Louis. This is Sunday, November 17th in the morning, and it's $35 per person. And there will be both a walking group and a running group, and you'll get to see some of the sites like the Arch. The next door is the Gateway to St. Louis Intro Tour. This is also on Sunday from 12 to 4 p.m. And this one is $53 per person. And you'll get to see a bunch of the things that St. Louis is famous for, like the Arch, the uh, baseball stadium, the old cathedral, the new cathedral, and the sculpture garden. Finally, there's the Forest Park Tour, or the Meet Me in St. Louis Tour. And this is on Tuesday from 9 to 3 p.m. But actually, you can act either leave the conference at 9 or 12.30 to go to Forest Park, and then you can leave Forest Park to come back at either 12.30 or 3. And this is $39 per person, and the tour will include three of the great attractions at Forest Park, the Science Center, the Missouri History Museum, and the St. Louis Zoo, which also includes the Bayer Insectarium. If you want to explore by yourself instead of going on those tours, and just a reminder, again, a lot of the tours have already filled up, and if you're interested, you should definitely sign up right away. But if you want to travel by yourself, um, St. Louis is a very easy city to navigate. But get to the downtown area where the conference is being held from the airport. You have a couple of options. You can either use light rail, and that takes about 50 minutes, or it's a 20 to 30 minute ride by car, and there's both taxis and rideshare. And just uh, as an example, an Uber costs about $40 one way. If you would rather use public transport, there's both buses, which are $2 a ride, and light rail, which is $2.50 a ride. And there's a light rail station less than two blocks away from the convention center, so it's really convenient. And if you plan to be using them a lot, you can also get daily or weekly passes to speed things up. Um, sorry, to make things more efficient economically for yourself. Um, so what can you do in St. Louis? Like I said, it's a pretty cool city. Um, there, here are some neighborhoods that are worth checking out, depending on what things you're interested in. The downtown area where the conference is being held is really cool itself. There's a bunch of historic sites bars, restaurants, and nightclubs, and a lot of them are walking distance from the conference center. Some other neighborhoods are The Loop, which is known for its live music, its classic bars, uh, lots of funky neon signs, and its international cuisine. The Grove is known for bars, restaurants, nightclubs, and stores. Maplewood is a district with a lot of um, local craftspeople, breweries, and eco-friendly restaurants. And finally, if you like arts, the Grand Center Arts District has galleries, performing art spaces, art museums, and theaters. And the Explore St. Louis website is a great resource for learning more about all of these places. Next, I'm going to talk about some of the famous attractions within St. Louis you might want to visit. I mentioned Forest Park already during the tours. This is a beautiful 1,300-acre urban park within St. Louis, and it's about five miles away from the conference center. If you want to use public transportation, you can get there, but you will have to switch so it's a little bit longer to get there. And one of the great things about the park is that it has a bunch of free attractions. So the St. Louis Zoo, the St. Louis Science Center, the Art Museum, and the Missouri History Museum are all free. Another really cool attraction is the City Museum. This is not a traditional museum, but is actually a 10-story former warehouse that's been filled with all sorts of interesting found and repurposed objects, and it's highly interactive. It's got tunnels, slides, gates, so it's really fun to explore. And this is just a 15-minute walk away from the convention center, and admission is $16, but on Fridays and Saturdays, you can visit after 5 p.m. at a slightly reduced price. Another site is the Botanic Garden. This is a beautiful historic botanical garden, which has North America's second largest herbarium. It's about 30 minutes away from the convention center by public transport or 10 or 15 minutes by car, and the admission price is $14. So um, while you're in St. Louis, there's some other cool stuff you should check out, like their food and drink scene. So to get your regular meals, there's a ton of bars and restaurants walking distance from the conference center. Uh, with all sorts of different cuisines and price points. So whatever your taste, you can find something for yourself. 
Um, St. Louis is also known for its craft breweries, such as the Four Hands Brewing Company or Morgan Street Brewery. And you, there's lots of options depending on what you like to check out one of the breweries. And finally, why don't you might want to try some of their local food specialties, like toasted ravioli, frozen custard, gooey butter cake, or St. Louis style pizza or ribs. And another thing that St. Louis is known for is its live music scene. Every week, there's dozens of small and medium performances in all sorts of different genres, rock, folk, blues, jazz. And so if you're whatever type of music you're interested in at whatever, again, whatever type of price point, you can probably find a show you like. So again, check out the Explore St. Louis website. It's a really great source of recommendations for places to go. Finally, um, I'm going to tell you about the student reception. So this is organized by ESA as an event for students and early career professionals to get a chance to hang out with each other socially. And this takes place on Tuesday, uh, immediately after the student awards from 8 to 11 p.m. at Ballpark Village, which is also a convenient 15 minute walk away from the conference. And you can also take light rail if you don't wanna walk. So at the reception, there's gonna be a DJ, there's going to be multiple bars and conversation areas. ASA is providing games like Jenga and Cornhole, and there will also be complimentary soft drinks and light snacks. It should be a lot of fun and you would definitely get a lot out of attending. But do remember to be safe. It is going to be taking place late at night and although it's a short walk, be careful and try to avoid walking back and forth by yourself if possible. Um, so thank you, and now I'm going to pass it on to Rebecca to talk about networking and what to bring with you. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, okay, we're having some issues. Okay. I will uh, begin by discussing a few networking tips to apply during the upcoming ESA meeting to help make your meeting a success. The first tip is to go where the people are. A good place to start is by attending the many events we have talked about in this webinar. You can tailor your networking connections to your goals by planning your schedule beforehand and attending talks or other gatherings where people you want to meet will be assembling. For example, if you, for instance, want to attend graduate school at a certain university, find their table in the exhibit hall and talk to some of the current students. Or if you want to attend a postdoc in medical entomology someday, attend a symposium based on that topic. When you get there, introduce yourself and start a dialogue. For example, introduce yourself to a speaker after a talk you found interesting and converse about your mutual interest. Networking often starts at meetings but most networking occurs after the conference. After collecting business cards, make key notes on the cards to help keep up with everyone you meet and assist with follow-up conversations. Shortly after the conference, send a follow-up email to your new contact, thanking them for the information, advice, and inquire if they're going to another conference that you might see them at. Maintaining dialogue with your contacts is an important part of networking, so don't be afraid to periodically email people within your network. ESA has archived webinars on professional development to help you prepare networking skills to use at future ESA meetings. In addition to your standard traveling packing list, it is important to bring a few additional items for the 2019 annual meeting. These extra items you may need are a CV resume, business cards, schedule, presentation materials, and professional business attire. Printed copies of your CV or resume can be handed out during mixers and receptions, as well as posted to the career bulletin board. The career board is a place where students looking for a graduate research position, job, or postdoc can pin their resume for future employment. Your school probably has a career center that can help you build a resume if you need one, but ESA has webinars about building your resume, so feel free to check out these materials on the ESA website. Business card exchanges are a key aspect of networking. 
cards can be placed with your poster presentation. So even if you're not standing by your poster, viewers have a way of contacting you if they have questions or are interested about your research. If you do not have any business cards, your school may have an office that can print business cards for you or be able to recommend a local printer. Printing out and identifying talks and activities you want to attend before the conference is a helpful way to streamline your time and ESA meeting experience. We also recommend reviewing the schedule at least the day before to figure out what you would like to do that day. The ESA meeting schedule can be found on the ESA webpage. It is recommended that you bring a backup of your oral presentation on a thumb drive, even um, if you've already uploaded a talk. It's better to be safe than sorry. If you're bringing a poster, you will need to provide your own supplies to fasten your poster, as ESA will not be providing any, so you make sure to bring your own Velcro strips or push pins to secure your display to the poster board. If you want to make friends, bring extras, as you may find someone else is in need of these supplies. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we greatly appreciate having you here. We hope that this presentation has been beneficial in learning what you can see and do while at the annual meeting. And we look forward to seeing you in St. Louis. <laughs>